This is the fourth video in a series about my new folding woodworking workstation. Today I'll show you how to build and use this folding outfit table to use with the workstation. Here we can see the table saw stand and outfit table, folded and put up against one of the walls in my workshop. In these shots, you can clearly see how little space you need to store this woodworking workstation. The table saw stand barely takes up 48 centimeters from the wall, and the outfit table takes up about 15 centimeters. I'm going to show you all the steps required to set up this workstation and allow you to see the bench and outfit table in operation. As you can see, folding out the bench legs is quite easy. The outfit table works in a similar way. I've also installed two latches on the legs to keep them locked, and I've made two stops out of plywood to lock the legs once they're folded out. These are the knobs and bolts I'm going to use to hold the table to the back of the job side saw. In this shot you can see I've used a small piece of plywood to reinforce the holding system. Setting up the table is very quick and easy. Once open, all you have to do is place it on the metal plate on the back of the saw, and at the same time insert the bolts in their holes. As you can see, I've made these holes wider so that I can adjust the table's height. On top of the table, I'm going to place the black MDF piece, which I'll use in the next video, to make the crosscut sled. When this project is done, I'll have an outfit table that's 80 centimeters deep. Now I'm going to level the table with the worktop. To do this, I have to use the tightening knobs, as well as adjust the threaded leveling feet which I installed in the lower part of the two table legs. Normally, you'd have to adjust the feet the first time, and then it won't be necessary to do so again. I'm going to make some cuts to see the outfit table in action. First, I'll place the saw fence. If you were wondering why I left this gap between the worktop and the outfit table, here's your answer. It's so that I can keep using the saw fence. Thanks to this table, I can cut relatively big boards in a more comfortable and precise way. I'll prevent the common problem of boards falling down due to a small work surface at the exit point of the cut. Dismounting the outfit table is just as easy as attaching it, or even more so. First of all, I remove the fence and the board I placed on it as a test. I loosen the knobs and remove the outfit table to place it on top of the job side saw. I turn the stops of the legs again so I can fold them in. I lock the latches and the outfit table is done. Now all I have to do is fold in and store the folding workbench, just like I did in previous videos. This is the 3D SketchUp file included in the plans available on my website.
In this animation, you can see the system I've come up with to store the crosscut sled by flipping it and putting it on top of the outfeed table to keep it handy at all times. At the same time, the base of the sled will be a part of the top for the outfeed table. I think it's a very convenient and versatile design, but if you're not interested in storing the crosscut sled in this fashion, you can screw a piece of a board to the frame of the outfeed table and store the sled somewhere else, or not make it at all. Now I'll show you how to build this folding outfeed table. I'll start by making the sides of the table frame. First I'll mark all the cuts following the plans, so that I can cut them on the table saw. I'll finish the cuts with a jigsaw. I'm also going to pre-drill all the required holes to put the frame together. I'll drill the holes with a column drill and the countersink drill bit. Here you can see me drilling all the necessary holes for the axis of the legs. Now I'm going to drill some holes in the back part of the table frame. Once these are made, I can start putting the frame together. I'm going to use wood glue and screws. I'm also going to screw on the other two middle parts of the frame. I'll use a clamp to make this step easier. Now all I have to do is make the front part of the frame. First, I'll drill the holes that will allow me to hold the outfit table to the back part of the job side saw. Now I screw these pieces to the frame and make sure everything works as intended. And it seems that it doesn't. I can't place the frame where I intended to, because this saw has a pinion gear and a metal plate right there. I'm going to measure the cuts I'll have to make on the front piece to solve the small issue. Make sure you do this with your saw, your model might be different. It's time to make the two table legs. First I'll mark all the required rebates to join both legs together. I'll stick the legs together with double sided tape so that I can machine them at the same time. I'm also going to mark the board with a knife to avoid tear out at the exit point of the cut. To cut the rebates I'll use the dado stack. I'll cut them in two runs to avoid straining the saw and blade. Now I'm going to mark the hole for the rotation axis and the curved cut for the top of the legs. I drill the axis hole with a column drill and make the curved cut with the band saw. I'm also going to drill the three crossbars that will allow me to join the legs together. It's time to join the two legs together by screwing the three crossbars. I'm going to use the table frame as a reference. I'll use some small 1mm pieces of cardboard as spacers. I'm also going to join some small pieces of plywood to the underside of the legs. With this step, I'm trying to make this part thicker so that I can attach the threaded leveling feet. I'm going to use a dowel jig to achieve a plumb hole and be able to install these leveling feet correctly. I've installed a threaded insert, and now I check whether the leg works as expected. 
I'll cut the steel pipe bits to size. I'll need these to use as rotation axes for the legs. It's important that these cuts in the pipes are also square so that the axis works properly. First, I'm going to put all the parts together to see how they work. First, I insert the bolt and the washer. After that, I'll insert the steel pipe and the bolt, and finally place the other washer and a nut. This is a simple system, but it's fairly firm and effective. I disassemble all the axis parts again so that I can join the legs with a table frame. I insert the steel pipe and the leg holes and position them on the frame. I insert the bolt and finish assembling this turning system. It looks like everything is working as intended. It's time to make the two stops for the legs. I mark the hole and cutting radius and machine these just like I did with the legs. I've noticed that in order to achieve enough space to adjust this table's height, I have to make another small rebate on the front. It bumps against another metal plate that's just behind the pinion. Now I mark and drill the required hole in the metal plate in the back of the job side saw. I'll use a bit that's 0.5mm smaller than the threaded tab and the bolt that I'm going to use. I'm also going to drill a hole for the bolt in the two small wooden parts that will reinforce the joint. I put them in their emplacement with the bolt. Now I'm going to machine the tabletop. First I'll make two channels with a dado stack and two runs. These channels must be aligned with the table saw miter slots. I'm also going to bezel all the edges of the top and drill some holes in the plywood so that this part can be screwed from below. All that's left to do now is to attach the barrel latches to keep the table folded when necessary. First I'll place two rubber bumpers. Now I'm going to install two spacers made of plywood so that I can screw the latches to them. I'll use the latch itself to mark the required hole on the other piece. In a few days I'll post the next video in the series where I'll be showing you how to make a table saw sled for use with this outfit table. Thank you for watching this video until the end.